What is up guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Travis. Of course, this is TW Motorsports and today, look at this. No, I did not buy another truck. I know a lot of you probably think that I bought another vehicle, but no, I am not buying any vehicles right now. This is uh, actually the guy that I bought the CTSV back from. And this is what he replaced it with. He's uh, He's been bugging me. He kind of wanted, wanted to buy this truck. I told him I wouldn't sell it to him, but he found his own. And it's a good looking truck, guys. It's a cat-eyed Chevy. And I've always kind of been a fan of these. I know they're not, um, some people don't like the cat-eyed front end. I, I kind of dig it. I kind of like it. But anyway, so he got this thing. It was already lowered like it is now. And it is hammered in the front. I think it's a five inch drop in the front, but the back is like a four inch drop. And so it's really awkward and he wants to level it out. So that is what we are going to do. And uh, how this thing is dropped now is it's got the shackle relocation in the front and a shackle in the back and it does not have a flip kit. So what we will be doing is installing a flip kit. He's ordered a flip kit for it and uh, some shock extensions. So basically we will be reversing some of the process of the way it's lowered now the cool thing it is it is c notched already so we don't have to mess with that it's got the same bolt in it looks to be the same bolt in c notch that mine has uh, i know a lot of people don't like the bolt in c notch but i've never had any issues with it guys so uh, i will continue to use them granted if i had a welder and a spot to do it i would take the bed off and weld one in but they work never had any problems with them whatsoever but we need to get this thing off the ground we will get started on it now he literally just dropped it off i wasn't going to do it until tomorrow but i've decided that i'm going to go ahead and do it now so we're going to lift this thing off the ground i've already got the front wheels chalked up and uh let's get started now that we have this thing off the ground we got the wheels off i did go ahead and spray some wd-40 or penetrating oil on all the connections we're going to take loose so the u-bolts uh this upper piece that we're going to have to swap over your bolts in the back and then the ones in the front because it's lowered already are facing the opposite direction so i didn't have to do those and then the shocks so we are now ready i have it supported on the frame up front with jack stands and then i have the rear end supported i'm going to go ahead and take the u-bolts out of place which is should be a 21 millimeter we'll go ahead and knock those off on both sides and get the rear end loose and then we'll probably lower it down just a little bit before we take out the leaf spring now, once we have those out of place, um, we can go ahead and take this plate off and set it aside. You will not be reusing it. And I'm going to go ahead and take the bottom of the shock loose. I'm not going to take the top loose. It should be fine. But the bottom will have to be removed, and that is a 21 millimeter as well. You're going to need a wrench on one side and a 21 on the other. So I'm going to take those out with the impact real quick. And then the rear end should be loose, and we should be able to get it down just a little bit, and then we'll work on the leaf springs. So now we have the shock loose and out of the way and the rear, hand, rear end has came down just a little bit. So we need to work on getting the rear mount out. And so all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the bottom bolt out, which is also a 21 millimeter. I will tell you guys, sometimes it's easier to spin this, which I believe is a 12. And um, you're actually going to tighten it while you hold a wrench on here. Sometimes it's just a little bit easier. And then for the front, because this thing is already lowered with a relocation kit, uh, we will have to put stock brackets back in place. Now, in order to do that, we are gonna have to take the old brackets out, which isn't a big deal. The hard work actually is already mostly done. Uh, these are kind of a pain to reach, but uh, normally from the factory, they're riveted on. So in order to do this kit, you do have to knock out the four rivets that hold it in place. So we don't have to do that, which is good. But those are the next steps I'm gonna take. I'm gonna go ahead and get this completely out of the way. Now on the other side, I've not done one of these in a very long time but you have the gas tank so hopefully we can reach up in there with the gas tank in place and i believe that we can uh, in order to get to those bolts on this guy here if not we may have to drop the gas tank which i'm hoping we don't have to do um, but if we do we do so i was able to get all the leaf springs out and this side was a little bit harder but you're able to reach up behind and get a wrench on it and loosen those up. Now going back together might be a different story, but let's take a look at the difference between a stock hanger up front and the aftermarket one. So this is what it came with, or not from the factory, but this is what he brought it to me with. So you can see it lowers the mounting point. Um, it actually, sorry, it raises the mounting point to bring the rear end up. So we have to put the stock one back into place in order for this to be able to do a flip kit essentially. So. That's what we are doing. I think I'm going to have to maybe make these holes a little bigger because the bolts that came with this, um, I don't think will work, but that's not a huge deal. 
it won't take me long to do that. Now, I'm not going to concern myself with bolting the bottom. Um, there, I don't see any sense in it. If I come up with some bolts, if I have some bolts laying around, uh, it'll probably be fine, but I don't think it's necessary to put those back in. Like I said, the factory uses rivets, so most of the time people just knock the rivet heads off. Anyway, we are ready to go back together, and so essentially we're just reversing this process. So we'll put these bolts in, uh, we'll get these in the front first, and then we'll worry about our leaf springs. This, honestly guys, doing it this way, now I would not recommend doing this if you were doing a flip kit to start with, but going from this to this is a little bit easier in the fact that you can literally just take the leaf springs out and put them on the bottom of the rear end where normally if you guys have watched my videos in the past we've had to slide the rear end over as far as we could because you can't get to the bolt up front so uh, it, it is a little bit easier going this route now I say easier um, I wouldn't knock these rivet heads loose just to do it this way, but uh, going this way seems easier to me. But anyway, let's get uh, these things bolted back in place. And like I said, I think I'll have to waller out those holes a little bit, but um, we'll bolt them back up and then we'll go from there. So for the passenger side, we have it all tightened up, snugged down, but the driver's side's a different issue. Um, so while you can get the bolts in from the outside, I just can't get my hand up in there to get the washers into place. So what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to lower the gas tank. Now, I'm not gonna take it completely out. I actually called a buddy of mine, the one who supplied these for this guy. Um, he did this, so I, it's been a while since I've done one. I don't even know that I've ever done one, to be honest with you. And uh, he said that he did loosen the gas cap here, or the filler neck, and then he just loosened this up a little bit, and that gave him enough room to sneak the tank over and the bolts and get his hands up in there and get the nuts and bolts started. So that's what I'm gonna do. Now the other thing to keep in mind is when we're going back together, uh, I'm probably gonna go ahead and put this leaf spring in because uh, the bolt goes in from the other way. Now, you don't have to do that. You can always put the bolt in and I may end up doing that, put the bolt in the opposite way because you do have room to get up on the backside. Uh, but from the factory, the bolt comes in the other way, so you can't get it out because the gas tank's in the way. So depending on the way you want to put it in, uh, now that I think about it, I may end up going ahead and uh, just putting it back in the way it was with the old drop kit. And uh, anyway, so I'll show you guys once I get the tank loosened up and lowered just a little bit. Uh, like I said, I'm not going to take it completely out. I don't even have any idea how much gas is in it. He may have just filled it up, which would really suck. But uh, I think I can get a couple jacks underneath this and be able to support it. So to get this filler neck loose, I'm going to take these two 30 T30s out and this just push in pin down below. Once we do that, this whole thing will be able to push towards the passenger side once we loosen the tank. So in order to loosen the gas tank straps, there's two 15 millimeters here. Uh, one obviously on the front side of the strap and one on the front side. Now, I just ran them down until there's just a couple threads showing. So you can see the first one here and you can see the other one between the bed and the cab. Now, once I did that, it gave me enough room where with a pry bar, just gently prying against this, I can move it over enough to get my hand up here and get the nuts started. So that's all really I needed. I, I was able to get my wrench up there without doing that. And chances are I'll probably go ahead and tighten them up while I've got this all loosened up. But not really as hard as I thought it might be, guys. Um, my hands aren't huge though. So if you had some pretty big hands, this might not work for you. You might have to take the gas tank completely out. Like I said, I'm not really sure how much gas he left in it. So if it's full, it might be pretty heavy. Anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and tighten these things up and uh, then we'll move on. So I was able to get them tightened up, and like I said, I used this pry bar after loosening the tank and uh, just bringing it over a little bit, and that gave me the room I ne needed to fit my finger up between the frame and the gas tank and get the nuts and bolts started in there. Now once I was able to do that, uh, I could actually reach the with a wrench from the front side that I undid it with without doing all that. So really the only thing you need to do is do that to get the bolt started. Now if you want to put a wrench up in there, you kind of need two people. I had my wife come and hold one of the bolts while I thread the nut on the end. It definitely helps. So now I went ahead and tightened the gas tank back up. All I need to do is put our bolts, I already got one started here, I need to put this guy in and this push pin will be finished there. Then we can move on to uh, relocating the leaf springs, which is what this whole thing uh, required. Now, if I'd have had those in place, this would have been a lot quicker. So before I slide the leaf spring back into place, I am gonna replace these rear shackles. Uh, he bought a different set. 
and so we're going to take these off now this is just 21 millimeter and then i'm going to slide the new ones on um, basically in and out now i'm not going to snug these down with the impact i'm going to take them apart with the impact but i'm going to leave them kind of loose because we're going to torque all this once the suspension is the weight of the truck is setting on the suspension you don't want to torque any of this down so once we get those swapped out then we can move those leaf springs under the truck and uh, start reassembling so i always like to put the rear of the leaf spring in first uh, it just seems like I have more mobility when I do that. So now we just need to swing the front up into place, put the bolt in, and then we'll worry about getting the saddles in place. Now, normally on most of the kits I use, you have to reverse this pin, but they've gotten a little smarter in the fact that they make these a little bigger now, the hole in the center of the saddle. And uh, in fact, I've got the saddle right here, I'll show you. Um, the hole is a lot bigger. So now that they've done that, you don't have to reverse that pin anymore like you used to have to do which is really really nice now the other thing is uh, well I'll show you when we get to that point but up here on the top the kit didn't come with a centering pin it came with the hole in it but I always like to put a bolt in there most kits come with that like the McGoy's kit comes with the bolt in the center so that stays aligned but I'll show you that once we get to it but I'm gonna go ahead and get the leaf springs into place and uh, then we can go ahead and let the rear end rest down on the leaf springs now that we have the leaf spring in and we have kind of resting on that, I've got a little, it's teetering just a little bit on the center jack. We're ready to put these guys into place. Now these are what relocates the rear end on top of the leaf spring. So this offset hole goes towards the front of the vehicle. So uh, once we do that, we can set it, it sets in these channels here, the little ear set on the front and rear channels. And uh, I'm gonna go ahead and get those kind of loosely in on both sides and let the rear end completely set down uh, putting all the weight of it on those and then we will talk about the top plate that i was concerned about without the centering pin and our u-bolts now that we've got the saddles in on both sides this is what i'm talking about so see if you didn't have a bolt in the center of that and it just you just have to bolt on both sides that stay centered because what will happen is this will walk around and i don't know why they don't supply that like i said when i buy mcgoy's stuff this isn't mcgoy's um, they supply that and I believe Belltech in the past has too but I may be wrong but I don't, I'm gonna go hunt down some uh, washers and a bolt that will fill that hole and uh, then we can go ahead set this on top and get our U bolts set on either side so you can see what I came up with just a bolt to keep that from moving just makes me nervous anyway once we have that in place all we need to do is drop our U bolts into place and the kit comes with a new plate that you see here. And that goes on the bottom and we use the factory nuts to get it into place. Now you wanna make double check that your um, hole, the thinner side is towards the center. So make sure that you installed that correctly, otherwise your pinion angle will be wrong. These have a built-in pinion angle corrector based off of the, the drop that you're doing so you don't get any uh, vibration. But once you do that, we can snug these down. Now I'm not going to tighten these down either until the suspension is loaded, but I am going to get them snug to where this rear end isn't moving around. Once we do that, guys, the only thing we have left under the car is to rehook the shocks back up. And I also have a set of shock extenders to install for them. So we're getting very, very close to getting the wheels back on, setting it on the ground, and then giving this thing a final tighten. So I went ahead and tightened this down and I like to keep these as straight as possible or as parallel as possible. So that required me using that hole to center. And so I ran these down until just threads are showing. Now it's not torqued down or tight. It might get a little snug, but it's not tight yet. Now we need to move on to the shock extenders. Now, in order to put these on, they come with bolts, but you do have to drill a hole for the center on the back. So I'm gonna drill a hole real quick. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bolt this into place, and then I'm gonna use that as a guide to where I need to drill my hole. Now it does come with all the hardware that you see right here so we're gonna grab these get these into place and uh, the bolts do come through like this so your nut will be on the outside as well as the washer so now I have the shock extension tightened up and guys that is a 9 16 on the front the smaller one the hole we had to drill and that is three quarters on the back so snug those up really tight I went ahead and lightly threaded in my shock bolt so you're just reusing your factory shock bolt didn't tighten that up either because now we need to put the wheels on and we need to set set the suspension down get some weight on it kind of bounce up and down on it and then we'll torque everything down 
So at this point we have the wheels and tires back on and I have blocks under the tires. These are some uh, DSE wheel stands that I made out of two by fours. Guys, these things come in super handy. The problem with trying to torque this down is that you can't get under it to torque anything. So you need something where the weight is on the suspension. That is how we want to tighten it down. So I'm going to bounce up and down on the bumper a couple times, make sure everything's settled really good. And then we need to torque things up. So as far as the torque specs go, they're relatively simple. So the top and bottom of this shackle back here in the back both get 70 foot pounds. The top and bottom of the, sh the shock, which I didn't take the top loose, but the bottom will go to 70 foot pounds. The U-bolts go to 53 foot pounds. And then that front hanger that we put in, the bolt that goes through it that holds the front of the leaf spring here, that goes to 110. So that's the heaviest one out of the bunch. So 110 up front, 70 for the shock, 70 for these guys. Now, listen guys, if you torque these down too tight, they're going to squeak and cause you all sorts of issues. They're gonna to wanna to bind. Follow the torque specs on this. A lot of people just hammer these down with an impact. Don't do that. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and get this all torqued down and we'll take a look at it all finished up. So we are all finished up. Everything is torqued to spec. And I will tell you guys, after a couple hundred miles, it's not a bad idea to go through and retorque everything um, that we originally torqued. Sometimes those U-bolts uh, loosen up a little bit, but not a bad idea to do that. Anyway, we went from uh, a 5.4, which is a really odd drop, I don't understand that, to a 5.7. Now, when I originally set it down, it was at the eight inch setting. And guys, that would have just been a terrible ride. And it's still not gonna be great because he doesn't have helper bags like my truck. Now, we did talk about later on him putting some helper bags in, and that would greatly improve the ride. Cause right now, going down the road, it it's probably gonna hit the bump stops, especially if you hit any kind of bump. But you can't argue with the look. It definitely looks good. Like I said, I'm kind of a fan of these cat-eyed Chevys and um, it wasn't too bad of a project other than moving the gas tank over a little bit to get that factory hanger back in place and even that wasn't that big a deal i just don't i'm not a huge fan my i talked to a buddy of mine who had done this drop and he said he'd rather do a flip kit all day long than do the hanger drop and uh, like i said i don't really understand the 5.4 but like i said it looks a lot better but guys normally i show you um what I'm going to do and then I show the process of doing it. In this video I didn't, I literally just told you what I was gonna do and then I showed you the completed project. I thought that might speed things up a little bit and obviously I did all this stuff on my green truck so you can check that video out as well. I'll post a link to it up above. If you guys did enjoy this video though, like always, please smash that thumbs up button. If you're not subscribed, make sure you hit that subscribe button because you never know what we're gonna be working on. While you're down there, ring that bell icon, that way you're notified every single time we drop a new video and stay tuned to see what we work on, whether it's mine or somebody else's next.